All right. Um, it should be working now, hopefully. Um, I gotta wait for it to catch up. So it, it yep, looks like it's working. Um, I have to wait. I have to wait for it to catch up though. Um, one moment, let me move forward a bit. <clears throat> So I'm a little bit less tired than I normally am for these streams. Um, although I'm, I'm still tired. Uh, today I am going, I, I'm going to try to pull together the rest of the networking, or at least most of the rest of the networking for, um, this game. Um, so most of the stream is going to be writing netcode. Which to some people is very interesting, and then to other people it's not interesting at all because, um, well, the interesting part is that, I mean, it's networking, so it's kind of more complicated and something you don't see a lot of people doing. Um, but the, the downside is that the, um, like, you don't get to see that many results as I'm working on things. It takes a fair amount of work to get a little bit of results, and then also, um, it's not visually impressive. So, um, yeah, this is what I'm, uh, let's see here. Um, I should be able to at least do this. This is easy. Um, I mean, I think I should be able to do the whole thing here unless I get caught up on some other stuff. So, uh, Okay, so I'm not going to touch this stuff today. My goal is to just get this stuff done. So I have to request the round state. I already have the thing where it kind of makes a game um, and then it assigns it to the players and everything. Uh, I need to add the, the game state to the server um, and then add that processing there. And then I have to do some stuff to break apart um, how this, it's calculated because right now the the game state's calculated by the client it needs to be moved over to the server um, But yeah, it needs to be uh, and, and you feel uh, Quest around state um, So this is going to be kind of the initial board state um, Around end time uh, Max moves players turn order um and the way this will work is it requests that information until the round ID matches what it expects. Uh, so that'll help keep it in sync because the, the clients will start requesting it before the server is actually ready to start the next round. Um, and then we have the player makes their moves. This is already implemented. Um, Except for the, the part where it sends the updates to the server, that shouldn't be too difficult because um, it should be just JSON, I think. Um, and then uh, this is round end. Um, it'll work similarly to this, except instead of looking for the beginning of the run, it's looking for the end. And then once it gets to the, the end information, um, it'll play through, play back through those moves and show it. Um, and then I'll go back to step one. Um, so there's not a whole lot here. It's really four, mostly four steps, uh, to do. Um, and I mean, this one's not too much cause I already have that functionality. It's just not hooked up to the networking stuff. Anyways. Um, I gotta set up the server here because, uh, it is not running. Uh, CD to Chess Royale. And then start the server. And now the game should be able to run. Cool. Um, the thing is, is I do need to have two clients running at the same time in order to connect. But um, I'll, I'll bring up another one just to show you that. 
because normally I show the game at the beginning of my stream, so. Uh, utilities? Wait, why am I in utilities? Uh, active. So, start it here. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I want the this one to be the primary. And then I can start up the other one. So, uh, Joe, ABC. And then it'll let me in once they all connect. Um, and then I can like, make my moves and stuff. Um, but yeah, the way this works is you capture pieces by going next to them with your king. Um, it's like I can't control these. Well, actually, I can, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't listen if I tried. Um, I will have to add. I don't know if I'm gonna do it in this stream. I would have to add later on the restrictions of not being able to control other pieces. Um, I think the netcode will prevent it, uh, but I do need to change the user interface part. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of random team stuff in the user interface that needs to get added. Uh, but like I can control this knight now, and then I could like take this king, uh, and then blues out. But um, right now I'm controlling everyone. It's gonna be you control one player later. Um, yeah. Anyways, last stream I mentioned hopefully doing a play test today. Uh, that's probably not gonna happen because um, I was very busy with a bunch of other stuff, primarily a group project uh, this week. Um, what I will be doing though, uh, is since I haven't put out any games lately, uh, specifically I haven't done any game jams lately, uh, my plan is to make a game jam style game uh, within the next week or so. Um, so I, I've got a busy schedule, but um, I can slide a game jam game into there, hopefully. Um, so um, it'll be probably a bit more effort than you normally see in my game jam games, uh, because I'll have a little bit longer to work with. Uh, but um, I, I I really want to get a game out because I, what, what, what is it? The last game I put out was Explode in March or something. So, um, yeah, I'm um, going to be working on that soon, and then you should see a time lapse from that, um, which will be interesting because that'll be the first time lapse that I guess is not from a, well, full first full time lapse, because I did have time lapses for my devlogs for a while back, but it'll be my first full time lapse that isn't, um, uh, what is it? It's my first full time lapse that isn't from a game jam. Um, but, yeah, so you can look forward to that. Um, I already have some ideas in my head as to what I'm gonna do there. Um, it's, my goal is to make something that's more visually interesting than mechanically interesting, because, um, well, it's gonna be mechanically similar to some other things I've done in the past, but, um, hopefully it's gonna be more on the visually impressive side, so, uh, we'll see. I just hit my desk. Uh, do I have any plans on making a 3D pixelated game? Um, so, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I, I'm trying to think of a good reference for this. Uh, I guess, I mean, Doom's a very good reference. So. Let's see. Uh, no, I guess that's not a good reference. Never mind. I'm trying to think of what a good reference is. Oh, I know. Um, I have one. What is it called? Do I need to pull up Steam for this? Um, give me a moment. I, I'm going to have to look this up on off screen. Uh, I want my Steam... There we go. Uh, I was playing a game that's close to what you're mentioning, I think. Where is it? Um, it's in here somewhere. How much did I play of it? Oh, here it is. Compound. So, it took me about, like, 
this type of art style um because th i this is probably what i'm going to do um i would like to make a vr game at some point with pixel art style so very close to this uh more, not mechanically hopefully um but like visually this is what i would be leading towards you, you get um a vr game with pixel art um and uh yeah i'm gonna hopefully do something like this at um within the next couple of years i have many plans for 2d games i'm working on but um th this is something that's on the back of my mind uh and I i've been messing around with a lot of computer graphics stuff lately so i've been learning a lot of the um fundamentals for uh, 3D game development, uh, more so than most people would when they get into game engines and stuff, uh, because um, I'm learning the, the like I'm I'm learning how I could make my own game engine from scratch, basically, uh, except for the physics part. I don't I don't want to touch that. Um, but the the graphical side of things, I, I've been learning a little about that. Um, so I mean, I could make my own like proper 3D Python game engine, kind of like a Sina. Um, if I wanted to, uh, minus the physics, um, but uh, I would probably just use Godot because uh, it has VR support and also it's a lot of work to make an engine. So uh, yeah, like yeah, he says like using Pixar to 3D models. Yeah, that that's exactly what I'm talking about or right now. <laughs> At least I'm, I'm assuming that's what. Yeah, uh, am I planning to make? Any top-down RPG game? Um, not at the moment. I would like to make a top-down game at some point. Uh, I'm not sure what the scale would be, or I, I don't really have any ideas at the moment. Um, but I would like to make a top-down game at some point. Also, the art style is a little bit different, so it's something I would have to um, get used to. Because um, I'm good at tile art for platformers. And this is actually one of the main reasons why I mostly make platformers. There's actually more of an art issue than a coding issue. Um, I mean, coding-wise, I can do whatever I want, pretty much. Um, I'm, uh, the issue is that I'm not used to drawing um, tile sets from that perspective. Um, it, platformers are the easiest thing to do artwork for. And so that's what I do because um, my games turn out the best when I'm working on platformers. Uh, Alright, I think that's all the questions. So um, I'm going to start working on this issue here. Uh, request a round state. So to do this, I need to be actually managing an instance of the game in the server. Um, so I have a set of users here. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is a set of games equals that, um, and then we'll have to set this up, uh, games, import games, and then over in here, we're going to do the games.py, class games, definite, uh, I don't think it needs any info, so the games, so this would be like a map, um, I mean, it could be a list. I'm trying to think. So, I do need to be able to route the player's requests into the game pretty easily. So, I think I need to have a dictionary here. Um, in terms of updating the game state, um, it could be a list because I could just update them all on the same, like, I don't know, uh, cycle. Um, but I, I do. So. I do need that to be uh, a dictionary so that I can route the player's requests into that specific game state because the server is going to be running, or the idea is, the server can run multiple games at once. Um, but yeah. So we need a def create game self. Um, so I already have this thing right here uh, looking for game. And then when it assigns a game, I need to actually create the game here. So right now it assigns based off of, what is this for? We have assign game right here. 
So it takes a game ID. Um, oh, so it just dumps all the current players into it, and the game ID is automatically set to one. Um, so what I can do is I create game game ID. Um, actually, no, I can I can keep the game ID like starting here. I can do that, or let's set a one, um, and then I can create the game ID. Or I create the game. Um, where is so th it's going to create an instance of board state. Um, so this needs to go from scripts dot game state dot board state uh import and three board state okay so i can create an instance of this so what i do is uh game equals uh and then i'll do also over here um game id equals one self dot game id equals game id uh self dot games self dot game id equals uh board state and then we pass it the game ID um, and then we need to return the new uh, wait uh, new game ID equals self dot game ID and return self dot game ID uh, and then we need to do self dot game ID equals one this needs to be that actually so we need to update the new the game ID for the next game we create as well, but we need to pass out the old game ID that was used here. Um, and then I would like to take the players as well. Uh, where is that game? Wait, so so what is a queue? Is the queue? It's a list of players. It seems. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's a list of users. So there's a way to assign players to the board state, which is what I'm going to be looking for here. Um, low players, claim pieces. Uh, wait, it's right here. So this it should take a list, I think. But the player objects are going to be a bit different here. Um, so that needs to be instantiated. Um, it's this. Alright. So over here, I need to do from scripts.gamestate. Wait, no, scripts.players.players import players. So I need to be able to create the players from the player list here. So that'll be taking in the players here, or I will say users because they're not proper player objects yet. Um, so what it'll have to be, um, players equals players, uh, for user in users, players dot add player, and then I need to grab, it's a player ID and username. Do I have that information on the server? The answer is no, apparently. Um, well, what I'm gonna have to do here. Uh, da, 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 da. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, username equals request.json username. And then I'll go over to the where the networking, I believe, on the client. And then I can say over in the looking for game, I can say username self .nd state dot username. Oh, I was using the username as the ID before. That's questionable. Um, so I'm going to go over to here, generate a unique ID, self dot, uh, pub, well, wait, it should be, yeah, public ID, equals random dot random, 
Uh, zero to nine 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 nine. Uh, import random, and then I can grab the public ID over here to use as the actual user ID. Um, now over in the back in the server here, I can take this username. It goes into the users um, under ensure user. Um, so that goes over to here, ensure user. Username equals that, I guess. Um, and then username equals that. And then add user, username equals username. Um, man, this gets passed down quite a few times. Uh, equals that uh, self dot username equals username so now I have the usernames associated with the users which was important um, so let's see what I gotta do here so the players they need a username a team ID and a player ID so the team ID can be purely index that's that's easy um, so I can go over to where was it? Yeah, uh, b -b 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 games. Um, I can go right here. Um, players that add player. So it needs a player ID and a user uh, name. So that'll be uh, add player user dot. Um, I have to go over here. It's gonna be the user dot ID. And then the user dot username. All right, so we're passing the username and the player ID. It'll add them. Uh, it'll assign the team ID itself. That's good. Um, and then it it'll generate the map. Oh, oh, the username map, not not the actual board state map. Anyways, so after loading the players, I think there's like, is there an initialization finish thing maybe? Or maybe not. Uh, I guess I can go over to the game stuff to see what I'm doing over here. Let's see. So the board state is created right here. I, wait, game state? So there's board state and there's game state. So where's the board state? Oh, it's right here. Um, so I'm looking for self.board. Uh, where is it adding the players? That is the question. I'm... Huh. Did I... Did I remove that? No, wait. Because it wouldn't actually... I don't think it would put the players in. Yeah. If, if, um... I just, I didn't mean to close that. Oops. I don't think it would put the players in unless I um, called the players. Oh, I, that's a step I missed. Um, so I add the players here and then I have to do um, self.games, self.gameid.load players. And then I pass in this players object. Um, Where is it? Yeah. And then that'll finish the initialization. But I find it interesting that I don't see it over here. Uh, what I can do actually is just search for it and see where it shows up. Um, let's see here. Right here. So it's done in state. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, so right now it's doing it automatically on the client side. Um, but my goal here is to get the server set up with this data. Uh, so. We have our create game, we pass in the users, it loads in all the players and gives us everything we need. Um, yeah, this looks fun. Uh, and then we can do def game self game ID return self that games game ID. Um, so this will keep track of our games. Um, we do need like a, do we need an update? Yeah, update self. Uh, and then for now, for game in self.games. 
values. Uh, game, oh, we'll do pass for now. There's no game that update right now. All right, so over in the server, we have our games. Um, and right here, when we assign the game, it needs to be um, to, I need to call games.create game. And then we can do create game. Self users. Uh, so I need to pass in these users, I believe. Um, and then after assigning the game to the queue, wait, no, hold on. I gave it queue, not users. Um, and then, uh, game ID equals that, and then I can do game ID over here. I believe that was what it was. Sign game, game ID equals one. Cool. Um, so you sign, well, create the game, assign it, um, and then I guess, uh, print just for demonstration purposes for myself uh, games dot game should be one I believe so now if I start uh, the game where ga uh, game and then oh board state is not defined in oh that's like a, an atom issue all right and then I can set up another one Uh, ABC Where is DEF? All right, so now it loads in I Did not see the print statement from the server. Oh You know why cuz I didn't restart the server. That's, that's why so Run that um, Restart all the stuff again Nope, that's the wrong thing there uh, ABC, DF, it's connecting, cool. So, if I bring this over, you can see, uh, we get our scripts.gamestate.boardstate, state, uh, board state object, uh, which means it created the, uh, board correctly, hopefully. Um, so the next thing is, I guess, syncing out the name, or no, that, that comes in the update. Um, let's see here. So I do have the games and I have the map from the user IDs to the games. Uh, yeah, the, the users should have the game associated with them. Yeah, right here. So in the assigned game. It says the current game ID, which I can use to get the actual current game. Uh, I would like a way to reference, mm, I don't know, I can do it externally. One option is to import the board into here so I can access it directly from the users, but I don't feel like adding that hierarchy. <laughs> um, all right. So now that we have the server with having the board, um, the player should be able to request from it, but I guess I do need a board state object as well, or game state. So I have this. Um, I think I can run an instance of this on the servers. Um, so I'm gonna have to go add this too, because this is what manages the game kind of. Um, Let's see. So we get over to the games here. Um, self.game state, I guess. 
in theory, it should be like one parent object that has both of those, but I'm kind of lazy, so uh, we'll, we'll do that. Um, and then we can do game state. Uh, game state, uh, I believe. So it's gonna be doing this ref node thing, which is, uh, eh. I'm, I'm not gonna be making use of it really. Just gonna do some weird stuff, uh, when I have multiple instances, anyways. So it wouldn't have worked out if I tried to use the ref nodes on the server. Um, anyways. So we get the uh, current progress to turn it. Okay. So there's no, this doesn't have an idea directly associated with it. So I just kind of have to create the association myself. Um, so I can create the game state. It doesn't have any, yeah, no, no initialization stuff. So I can do um, over here in games, we do. Uh, self that game state uh, game ID equals game state and that's that um, there we go so from here we now have access to a game state and a board state for each of the created games in the server um, so, there is some configuration stuff. I believe it's actually stored in the board state. So, round end time. Well, this is this is game state. Max moves. Um, this is board state? Or maybe it's a... Where is it? I know there's an execute function here. Loud moves. Do I not actually have it in the execute that it restricts that? Uh. Mm. So execute one move. Where is it? Does it not check? Maybe it checks up here. Uh, and this is where it adds it to the buffer. Uh. Oh, here we go. Self that max moves. That's what I was looking for. So the max moves is defined. Is it in here? Uh, all right. Uh, well, that's a. F Where's this? What? Where's this coming from? <laughs> um. What? There's no default value. That's so weird. Normally, I wouldn't like put that in there uh, without defining it. Oh, it's a property. That's why I couldn't find it. It's in under game rule. What? <laughs> I'm confused. So, oh, it's um, a property here. That's why I couldn't find. There's, there's no self dot max moves like set equal. There, it's, it's a property. So it comes from the game rules. Does this create the game rules instance? It does not. Um, mm. This reference is not going to work on the server. Um. <laughs> So, I think game rules, it could make it a child, uh, boy, um, so I do need an instance of this on the server as well, so I, at the minimum, I gotta do this, so game, game rules goes right here, the game rules, and then it needs to be, uh, I'm gonna assign it in the hacky way here because I don't care too much about the spaghetti on this game because the game's not itself isn't too complex. Um, so 
rules equals game rules. Um, I need a way to say that I'm running the board from the server. Uh, host mode equals false. And we can do uh, self.host equals host mode. Um, and then we can say over here in game the board state host mode equals true and then I'll tell it it's a host I assign the rules here we get game rules equals game rules uh, so game ID wait that doesn't need a game ID so I can take this out but, um, over here in the Max moves, it needs to be if not, oh, well, no, if self.host, it does one thing, otherwise, it does this old thing. Um, so over here, we'll have, um, we'll get the self.rules. So we can do self.rules right here. Um, and then that'll be the rule set for this game if it's the host. And then if it's the client, it pulls it from the remote thing. Anyways, so the server now has the rules. It has the, the board state and it has the game state. So the board, that comes to the board state. This comes from the game state. This comes from the rules, technically. Um, this comes from, huh. I'm gonna have to make a request into the users for that information, I think. Uh, the turn order, that's coming from the board. Um, and then it needs a round ID, which is also, I believe, it's either in the game state or the board state. So I think I have everything I need on the server to do this step here. I'm going to read chat real quick first, though. Um, make a virtual avatar face from scratch, like the one I have. I mean, that, I did, the, the, so you're saying it would take the camera inputs, draw a virtual character based on the face perspective, uh, right to streaming file. There's no streaming file to write to. That's not how um, this stuff works. But um, the avatar I'm using right now, I, I made it myself from scratch. So, I mean, I already did the, that. Uh, and I have an old video about it, but it, I need to make a new video about it because I completely changed how I did it. Uh, but uh, the... Like, yeah, the... I've already done that project. <laughs> um, and yeah, the way it works is I have, I'm bringing this over. Um, you can see it's Pygame right here. Um, it just sits as a window and then OBS um, pulls, uh, like I'm, I pass that window to OBS and then it uses the green screen and then um, that's that. Uh, did I try calculating the situation in chess with math, what do I think about making a bot that does this? Uh, you're not asking how to do it. Uh, you know, it's not the point there. Uh, are you talking about like, um, those bots that calculate the optimal moves? Um, or like just AIs, um, that you'll see on a lot of those. I guess chess websites and stuff. Um, I, I'm not gonna do that. I, I, I don't actually have, I don't, I don't have that much of an interest in competitive chess. It's more like I'm taking the rules of chess and making another interesting game with it. Uh, so, uh, I'm not gonna make something like that. Also, I would have to train it myself because this game would be completely different from a normal game of chess and how it works. Um, I'd say it's not really a good reason to do that. Um, I'm under arrest for being too cool. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, am I going to live stream my upcoming game creation or just time ops? So I'm, I don't want to live stream it. Um, because live streaming slows down everything I do to like 50% speed or less. So, um, I, I would like to just kind of sit down and make a game because uh, I have not actually gone through the full process of making a game in a while. Uh, like I haven't done the, the music um, for a game in a while. 
because of um, it's been it's just coincidentally the last couple of the game jams I wasn't available. Or wait, no, uh, one of them I was available. Uh, what was it? The it was, I think it was the Alka Jam. Uh, I was available, but the theme was um, bad enough that <laughs> it was books or something. Um, I, I I disliked the theme so much that um, I, 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 I couldn't come up with any good ideas, um, which was a first for any game jam I've ever done. I've done like 20-something game jams and never had a theme that gave me that hard of a time. Um, so I, I kind of dropped out of that game jam. I didn't even write a single line of code or anything. It was just I couldn't come come up with a game idea, so I dropped out of that one. Uh, the Ludum Dare came at a bad time for me. Um, so the last two game jams have popped up I haven't done for various reasons. Um, and there won't be another one until next year. So um, I really want I really want to make another game this year, so I'm gonna make another game jam style game without I guess there are time restrictions of the game jam. Um, so I'll, I will hopefully have it done in a, like I'll hopefully do it in a couple days, but I I'm not gonna have the um, like I won't be following the rules of a game jam. So like uh, I won't have to be following a theme. I won't have to keep it strictly within two days because I, I am a bit busy. <laughs> uh, so I'll stretch it out a bit more. But the scope of the game will be a game jam game. That that's the idea. Um, uh, but yeah, to, to answer your question, it's just gonna be the time lapse, no stream. Have I done any game jams? Uh, as I just mentioned, I've done like over 20 of them. So, uh, yes, I've done a bunch of them. Uh, how do I make music? Um, I mean, the free way to do it is uh, LMMS. Uh, it's a uh, tool, what is it? Linux um, music? Is it something dumb like Linux music making software? I think it might be. Linux, wait, LMS. What what does it stand for? So here's LMS. I don't. What does it stand for? More. But you can, if you don't have money, uh, this this is what I used for a while. Um, LMS. Uh, you can make you can uh, make music with this, but generally you need like a DAW, so like a digital audio workstation. Uh, LMM, eh, LMMS is one of those, and you can make music with it. Um, there's also simpler things. There's things like which I used for a while. I used Beatbox.co, and then I moved over to uh, Bosca Kyle or something. I forgot. Uh, I'm saying it wrong. I'm almost guarantee. Um, but there's different tools you can use. Uh, but once you get up to a full DOD, you get a lot more functionality to work with. Um, and then I moved to FL Studio myself, um, which funny story there. I bought FL Studio. They gave me a license. So I, ha like, I have an FL Studio license. But I don't think they ever charged to me. It's the weirdest thing. So I mean, I think I gave them my PayPal or something and they just never took the money out of my account. I don't, um, I'm not, I might, it might be that I just missed it somehow, but I, I don't think, um, they ever took the money out of my account. So I effectively got an FL Studio license for free, which sounds a lot like piracy, but that's not what happened. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know what happened there, but I, I essentially got, I think, a free copy of FL Studio, which is funny. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, right now I'm using FL Studio to make music. Um, well, let me see this. LMMS Wikipedia. They aren't saying on their website. Okay, so, it's not something dumb like Linux music making software. It's, a uh, Linux Multimedia Studio is what it stands for. Um... Okay, that, that makes more sense. Although, I guess, it's, to me, it doesn't seem like multimedia. It's it's just music. I wouldn't call that multimedia. Anyways. Um, uh, da, da, da. But it's not a game jam, so just give yourself 50% more time. Uh, we like watching the live creation. Uh, yeah, so... I, I will... Um, 
I mean, I, I know people like to watch the game gyms live. Um, I, I think it's it makes more sense of, as an event if I can do the a proper game gyms time restrictions and just kind of put the stuff back to back and show the whole thing in one weekend. Um, this is going to be a little bit more scattered. I, hopefully I'll have it done in like a week. I don't know. Because uh, I actually have finals coming up. So uh, there's a small chance that this doesn't, doesn't get finished until... Uh, when will it be? Um, just bang my knee on my desk. Um, it's a small chance it doesn't get finished until after my finals, which is like... Uh, finals week for me is right here. Um, like 5th through 8th or something. Uh, so... Actually, no, I think my school does this weird thing where it's like... 1st through 6th. Um, wait, do I have finals next week? Last semester they split it, so it was like half of finals are in one week and half are in another. So I might actually have final exams next week, huh? Anyways, um, so I would say at the latest I will have a game out by the tenth. But my goal is because I I have like the rest of today, I have tomorrow, and I have. Whatever time I have after work at school <laughs> next week, um, I can hopefully get it done. Um, I would say hopefully sometime in the middle of next week, or if not by next weekend. That's the goal. Um, but at a minimum, I think it should be done by the tenth, or actually, I would say the end of that weekend, so the eleventh. Or actually, I'm I'm on break. Uh, at this point, I mean, I still have my job, but um, once I get into um, like once I get past the end of finals, which I think is over here, I haven't even looked when all my finals are. All I know is I have um, a presentation on the sixth, um, and then I have let's see, I have two final exams. I don't know what days they are. I guess I'll have to find out. Um, but I think over here ish, and then onward, um, I'm pretty open but sometime around here it should at a minimum be done I would say by the 11th and then but I'm aiming for uh, next week uh, depends because I'm, I'm not gonna like rush it and then like skimp out on like the music or um, some visual effects or something because of time constraints uh, I'm gonna do like the scope of a game jam game maybe just a tiny bit bigger um, but I don't wanna um, I want it to be a decent game, um, so I'm not gonna shoot myself in the foot by <laughs> uh, trying to abide by time restrictions of a game jam when I don't need to. Um, all right, uh, LMM uh, LMMS looks good. You're gonna try? It. Yeah, it's pretty good for free stuff. Um, I think, from what I've heard, uh, my, my brother tried LMMS, and, but he also tried Reaper, which is, from what I understand, kind of like WinRAR, where you can buy a license, but they just kind of bug you every now and then. Uh, okay, it's not a huge deal if you don't buy a license. Uh, so, um, Reaper is a more complicated option that uh, has more features if you want to do still do stuff for free, I think. Um... And uh, the issue with LMMS, like there's some bugs with it. Uh, like it doesn't support VST3, it only does VST2. And then even when it does support VSTs, a lot of times they, it won't be able to save your project. You can, um, most of the time you can save your project, but there are some VSTs where the, the, the save gets like corrupted or whatever and doesn't quite work. Um, so actually, this happened with uh, Drawn Down Abyss. So I, I was make, I was composing the music for Drawn Down Abyss, um, and I was using some VSTs where I couldn't save them, like where I couldn't save the project file. It's like I straight up don't have the project files for a lot of the uh, Drawn Down Abyss music because the um, uh, I couldn't save it to begin with. So I just have the the dot waves. I made them all in one shot and I have the the dot wave files from them. Um, so that that was that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, LMS has some issues, so it's not perfect, um, but it gets the job done. At least it did for me for a while. 
Uh, when would I think about re release my next project? Uh, well, I mean, depends on what my next project is. So, I mean, my next project should be that Game Jam game. So I just answered that question, I guess. Um, what do I think of the Python Idol? I was using it for a while before Adam. Um, the only thing that bothers me, actually, now it will be two things really. Uh, actually, it will be a lot of things, I guess. The, just the, the main thing, the main issue I have with Idle is it doesn't really support you working on multiple files at once very well. Um, and then the other thing is, is that I'm uh, used to working with Tab9. I did a sponsorship with them a while back. Um, and it's an, a code auto completion tool that I use. And um, even though they came on as a sponsor, I've been like using their stuff for over a year now, I think. Um, uh, I think I'm coming up on almost two years because I, I used them for a while before I even took the sponsorship because I wanted to make sure that it was something that I actually wanted to promote. Um, so, um, but yeah, so tab nine is something they use a lot now. Um, it, it coding feels a bit more tedious if I'm not using it. So th that, the fact that I don't have that annoys me when I use idle. Um, but I mean, for a beginner level tool, I think it's great. Um, but, uh, when you get into the more advanced stuff, it's nice to have, I guess, at least a text editor. Uh, you don't need all of the functionality of an ID, but you need to be able to switch between files easily, uh, which is what Adam gives me. And then also, like I mentioned, tap nine, but that's like a personal preference thing. Um, so, um, for the most part, I would say the main issue is just idle doesn't have support really for multiple files. Um, I mean, like, it, like multiple files under one window, you can't switch between them easily. You can like go file open, then you can go find the file and open it up, but it, it's very tedious. It's not just like click, click, and yeah. So that's the problem with idle. Um, make a fluffy potato game jam. Um, some they tried to do that in my Discord server. I was not involved, uh, really. I, I mean, I set up some channels for them so they could do that. Uh, but uh, I, I haven't done anything official. I've never done an official game jam. And the reason for that is because I'm actually a moderator of the Alka Jam. Um, and so there's the... Oh, hold on. So there's the Alka Jam. Um, I'm a moderator for this. Uh, the... Mm, like, they run their own game jams, let's see. They're, they're doing a tournament thing where they, they play games from the previous game jams right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm a moderator for this. Uh, so this is kind of the game jam I'm associated with already. So it'd be weird to me to be like a moderator for this and I, I have... I've historically had some influence in how um, things were run. Uh, I think... What was it? I mean, I'm marked as a team member in the Discord server. I think uh, I might have been... I'm not sure if I was listed on their NPO filing, but um, I was in a couple meetings where they kind of managed the direction of this as well. But um, I haven't been too involved lately, um, and I know that the guy who started this project kind of stepped back and handed it off to someone else recently. Uh, but this is the game jam I've been associated with. Um, like, I, I've done some work for, um, like for example, uh, if I go over to events, hello, um, let's see, I drew, I drew all of these, um, icons here for the, um, uh, let's see, let's go over here. So I drew all the icons for these um, uh, metals. So I drew like that cup, the paintbrush, the, yeah, all, all that stuff. Um, so I did that, and then I also um, there have been some times. I think there was a time where I actually released the results for the game jam myself because people just kind of forgot. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've, I've been fairly pretty involved with that game jam. So that is kind of my, I mean, I wouldn't call it my game jam in the sense that like it's not like branded 
for me or anything um and i don't have like full control over it but that's the one i've been involved in so for me it would be weird to run my own game jam on top of being involved in that one uh because i feel like the alka jam is already run better uh so if you want to like do a game jam with me i would recommend joining that one when i do that one sometime maybe um so yeah there's that is it even worth it to update to python 3.11 i would say yes later on um last time i checked pygame was not updated for 3.11 there's a lot of stuff that's not ready for it yet um but uh they have some fairly substantial performance improvements so they, um so once that stuff is actually updated for it i would consider switching um but right now a lot of stuff isn't there yet um like a bunch of uh, modules need to be updated that i use and then i'll switch uh, you use VS Code for everything? Yeah, that's most people. Uh, most people just use VS Code, and I might have to switch it to it in a bit when um, Adam deprecates, which you can see down here. Um, Adam, like some of my packages are deprecating. Um, Adam itself, they it's getting shut down by GitHub because well, GitHub runs this project, and they want to replace it with um, uh, their own like cloud-based IDE where they're trying to make money. Um, as opposed to this just being a good open source tool. So they're, they're kind of killing off Adam and I'm going to have to switch in a bit here. Uh, I might do VS Code. I'll, I'll look at my other options as well. But I get like two weeks until they kill it. So that'll be interesting. going to get a change of scenery for my live streams when that happens, I guess. Which is unfortunate for me. Um, all right. Uh, so I just read a bunch of chat. I'm gonna get back to work here. So I need to sync the board state. I need to pull this from the server. Um, need to get all of that information we have right there. Um, the way this is gonna work is, I guess the networking should have a state, a game state maybe. And then it kind of cycles through different things. I'm trying to think, because logically it makes sense to put it into the game state object, but I almost don't want to be like I don't want that on the server. Almost I don't know. I'm trying to think. Let's 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 look over here at games. See how I'm doing it. So, oh, I have a state thing. That's where where it needs to go. So we have state. So it can go connect a game. No, that's not right. Because that, that's a different state. Um, application state. Uh, so that's all the rendering stuff. So that render update. So it does it by the turn progress. That's interesting. So what it needs to be. So th this will loop the turns, it looks like. Um, yeah, so it even says temp here, so this is going to have to be removed later. Where is it defining the first end of turn? Oh, ha. Huh. It's down there. All right. So, what needs to happen? Um... Where is it? So there's a point in the networking where, yeah, so right here, this needs to get information from uh, the server with, um, what, uh, so it needs to wait for the, the, the game's start thing. Um, wait. So, if this says joined, it should immediately be in the start state for the game. So I can immediately get, uh, what, what am I calling it? Uh, round state. Or, I guess board state. Um, or game state? I think that's the broader term I should be using here. So I can go over to networking and say, let's say, get uh, game state. Um, so we can give it the user ID. I don't need the username anymore. Um, and then let's just print out resp. 
So I'll make a request to this endpoint. So over here, I have to do an at app.root, and we can do game state uh, methods. This is just a get. Oh, no, 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 never mind. It's a post. So we do post and then def uh, game state. Uh, we can do user ID equals that. And then we can grab from, we can do uh, user equals um, users dot, is it users dot user? Something dumb like that. Uh, users dot user. Oh, my back feels fine. I'm like, I think I'm losing circulation in my neck somehow. It's weird. Like the back of my neck. Uh, user ID. So that gives us a user object and using the user object, we have the current game ID, which we can use over here and be like, um, game equals, uh, games that game. And that should give us the game object. So what we need here, uh, let's do data equals, we have a couple things to fill out. So we have, um, the max moves, I guess the rule set entirely. So the rule set needs to be represented as JSON. Um, game rules, we get the turn duration. Uh, I actually don't need this information. Um, let's do def, uh, oh, I don't even need to send the max moves. I just need to send the turn. As long as it has the correct rule set, the, the client will know the correct amount of um, moves. So I just have to send the turn number. So um, so we get the board. So that'll cover, let me go over here. The board has obviously the board. It has, um, it'll get this essentially by having the, the turn number stored, I think. So we have over in, we have board state. I think it keeps track of the turn number, turn ID. So that, that's what I need. Um, is that stored in the, uh, there's a JSON thing in here where it just converts the whole board. Rule sets. Um, so that is something I need to add. So turn self dot turn ID, I believe. So, we ha yeah, uh, Turnity, this needs to be loaded in from, I have a from JSON function or something. Yeah, self dot turn ID equals data and turn. And that will keep track of the turn for me. So the board has that information through the turn. It has the board. Um, and you need to define the end time and send that in the players. That's going to be like a list of IDs and names, I believe. And the turn order that also comes from the board, I believe. So, uh, we can do board state dot, uh, what is it? Dot JSON board equals game. Uh, okay. So this, the, the game is that game gives me the board dot JSON. So. This is the board. Then we need to do, um, so I can do the turn, the pieces, the, the move order. Uh, huh. The turn order needs to be in there. Um, so I'm gonna add that. Get a turn order, and then we need to flip this around. Um, so we do turn order equals that. Um, and then, so we have this done. We have this done. We have this done. So the next part is the player. So that's the username with the user IDs and the usernames. So uh, we can do players, 
Um, and that'll be... Do I have a way to get the users by... Oh, no, I can grab it from... Uh, in board state. So I have the um, add players. No, apparently. What is it? Load players, not add. So in here we have our players. Uh, it doesn't use, it just uses a team ID. So uh, I think I might store this in the games thing just for the info. Um, self dot players equals that. Um, self dot players equal uh, players yeah there and then we can do def players self game ID return self dot players game ID all right so we do game dot wait no uh game stop players and then we give it the game ID um all right so we have the players now I think I should be at there we do players we get all that all right so now, um, well, wait, we can't just dump it like that. So we need a JSON form of that. So uh, over here, we need to do def uh, at property def JSON. So we need a JSON format, which I can send over the network um, for the players. So that'll be. Um, I guess uh, data equals that. We do players equals, and then we do um, player uh, ID player dot ID name player dot username team player dot team ID uh, for player in self dot players and then return data um, and then I should be able to dump that in and over in the server I can just grab that and grab dot JSON so there are our players so now we just have to deal with the round end time. So we just created the game, I believe, uh, in theory. So it should have a round end time already. Um, all right. So I believe it should have a round end time. So that comes from the rule set, right? Or no, no, it comes from the game state. So it automatically has that. Da, da, da. All right. So this is managed a bit separately. Um, let's say for the first turn, let's give it like 20 seconds just so the players can get in maybe. Um, and then we can do, we need to be able to send that. So we do uh, uh, games def state self game ID re return self that game states game ID uh, 
that's kind of the spaghetti way to have that set up. I should have had like a dictionary inside a list of the games, which had all the different elements, but whatever. Um, so we do state, um, and then we need to do, or no, it just needs to be a end time. Turn end will be the game dot state. We do that, and then we do um, dot turn end. So that should be all the information. So we return JSONify the data, and then over back in the networking. Um, this post return JSON. Yeah, it does. So I can print the response there, and then um, should give me the stuff I'm looking for. All right, I'm gonna run this, and then I'll read chat after I um, uh, it, like if this works. I mean, chances are I'm gonna run into a bug, but uh, we'll see. So run this, a. So I should start getting the requests on the server. As uh, one will be, and then. Uh, Okay, they both crashed with a JSON decoder error because board state has no. Yeah, okay. Um, that's a mistake. So over here, that's not game, that's the user. So reset the server. Try that again. A. B. Dictionary object is not callable. Oh, um, did I do it up players instead of player? <sighs> Games to be. No, wait. That's players. Ah, uh, that's um. Oops. Uh. Game players, I guess, is what I'm gonna do here. And then, eh, that should fix that overlap, I guess. Um, now we try again. We just keep going until I fix all the bugs. That's how this goes. So we got user A, and then I gotta start up the second one. Nope, wrong command. B. And then hopefully it doesn't crash this time. All right, we got it. So this is um, our information here. This is what the server sends, and uh, we get <laughs> board, board, board. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um. Let me see. So I could, I can remove one of those boards. <laughs> that is entirely unnecessary to have that much, uh, that many layers of board. Um, here, let me format this so I can actually look at this nicely. Um, all right. Oh, that's funny. Format. Okay. I'm hungry. So two of these boards make sense. Uh, the third one does not. So the, there's the boards like object that has a bunch of board state information. Uh, so that should be under board. And then we have the boards tile map, which is also called board, which is what the second board is. But this third board here is unnecessary. I can remove that one, I think. Um, so this is just a tile map here. It's all zeros and it should be. Um, so over here, I need to go, um, let's get down to the bottom. Uh, do I need to like, how far down does, okay. So here's the bottom here. So there's the, the move count. Uh, what is spawn count? Anyways, um, 
move order, move queue. Those are empty and they should be. Um, pieces, this is the list of all the pieces and their locations. Um, and then, we'll set turn around. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go over to the server. Instead of doing this, I'm going to do uh, data equals that. And then what I can do from here is data players equals this. And then I can do, uh, wait, we'll hold up. That is not valid syntax. Um, and then we can do data turn end equals, um, and then we can give it this. And then um, that'll remove, in theory, the, the first game thing. So I'm going to restart it. Um, and assuming this is so wait, I'm expecting I'll read chat in a moment here. B. So away from the connect, it should give me the giant output with all the game info. There we go. Um, where's the other one? I'll kill that. All right. So we get all of our information here. You notice we went from three boards to two. So we fixed that issue. Huh. <clears throat> so now I like the way this is formatted. We can uh, pull it in um, to the, the board state from here. Or, um, anyways. Hmm. I'm gonna have to do some proper, like, I'm gonna have to apply this data in a bit here. So I'll read chat first, but um, just know that's coming next. All right. Um, is Adam deprecated? It, yeah, I went over that. It, 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 not yet, technically. They're deprecating it in, in um, December, early December. So it's like two weeks away. Um, and they're gonna shut down their package um, servers and stuff, so everything's just gonna start breaking. Um, World Cup France versus Denmark. Who do I think will win? I have no idea. Uh, my guess, based on population, I would say France. Um, <laughs> I don't follow it too closely. Uh, I watched two games yesterday. That was it. Um, I, I like playing soccer more than, or, or football, uh, for Europeans, I guess. I like playing soccer more than, um, uh, watching it. I don't watch it so much, but I'll play it a lot with family. Um, who is the creators of the music I'm, I use for the music and videos? Uh, well, I mean, the live stream is in the bottom left. You can see it. I, I credit every single song that plays on the stream. Um, in my videos, I do a bunch of different stuff. Um, so, typically for my re for my time lapses, I use, like, video game remixes and stuff. Um, usually Pokemon or something. Or, oh, uh, no, 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 no. The tradition is to use one-shot um, remixes. Uh, but I'm gonna run out of that, that soundtrack's not very big, so I'm gonna run out of stuff soon. Um, anyways, uh, I always, if I use music in a, a, a video, if it does not come from the YouTube, like, music library thing, um, it's credited in the description, so you can always check what, where the music came from. Um, alright. So that was the questions. I will get back to coding. So we need to sync the board. Um, so I should be able to call the uh, from Jason right here. And then That'll sync it up with the server. So all I gotta do, uh, well actually I'm gonna add a function over here. Let's call it 
def sync board self. Um, and the way this will work, so do this. Uh, so it needs to return a value. Uh, let's call it attempt sync board. Um, and it needs to make sure that the turn ID is what I expect. So first, it's important to pull out that information. So it's in here somewhere. Uh, there's turn right here. So I can go uh, resp turn. Um, expected turn equals one. Uh, so if that is expected turn, then we know that the server's on the right turn. Um, we can do um, we need to sync this up. So this will go over to uh, self self dot um, nd, and then we can grab game state dot uh no not game state uh board state so board state and then we can say from json dot from json and we give it resp and that will give it all the information it needs to fill out the board um but the rules uh what well, uh what is it the Uh, what is start shift? Oh, okay. So I can do to set turn end on the game state. Um, where is it? So networking, we do self .nd game state dot set turn end, and then we give this the epoch of the turn end which comes from the response, and that will be the, um, uh, what was the field? It's in here, turn end. Just turn end. Uh, but we do have, um, I believe in the state, we have, did I do the time synchronization yet? Do I not make that request? Maybe I don't make that request. I'll, I'll have to sort that out later, but, um, Hmm. All right. So later on, I'll have to do some time syncs with the server. Um, right now, I can assume it's the same. Uh, six add uh, or add time sync with server. So that needs to be a feature I add later. All right. So we can set the turn end to equal um, the, the turn end there. So that takes care of everything. Um, I do need to update the player list. Uh, so where is that? That is the question. So the game, or I know the UI pulls from it, so the UI pulls from, let's see here. Where does it get the usernames? It does render turn, I think that, yep, state that username. Huh. It uses the same name for everyone. Alright. Um, uh, okay. Hmm. Let's do this. Um, I can put it in. I can drop the info into state, I guess. So I can go. Where's state? I can drop it into state here. I could say self dot remote players equals that, and then I can do over in the networking. I can go self dot nd remote uh, witness state dot remote oh, emote <laughs> remote players uh, equals resp players. I believe. Uh, let's pull this up. So we get um. Players, ID, name, yep, cool. 
so we get our remote players equals that. Now, um, I can go over to the UI and I should pull from remote players. So instead of doing this, it needs to be, um, uh, actually not, I do need, um, hmm. I think the players need to be indexed by, how did I do this? I think they are a list, right? So these players are a list. Players, players. Um, that second players doesn't need to be there. What I'll do over in um, here, I'm just going to return th this list. Uh, there we go. Um, anyways. So, this is a list. Goes to the players. Should it be in the turn order? I guess not. Uh, I'll let the, the client sort that out. So we go over to UI. When you go through the teams in the turn order. Does, do they get the team ID? Oops, I accidentally just froze my avatar. So I need to see if I get the team ID. Uh, that'll be... Yeah, team right here. So I get the team. Um, def. Uh, team player self team ID. This is not the optimal way to solve this problem, but I mean, there shouldn't be enough players that it causes lag to, to loop through everything a bunch of times, so. Uh, so this is going to be um, an empty list instead of a dictionary. Um, and is that the way I set this? Yeah, it is. Okay. So for player in the remote players, if player dot team ID is team ID, return player. Oh, uh, otherwise, you return a none. Um, so the turn order, I believe that's included, right? Turn order. Where is it? Uh, turn duration, rule sets, turn and turn order. Okay, so one, two. Alright, um, so that should match by now. Um, so we get the team. We can say, um, player equal, or no, uh, player info equals self dot and do state dot we grab a uh, team player. We throw in the team ID. And then we can. Um, is that the. Yeah. It now we can do if player info. Then we do this. Um, and the text will be uh, instead of that, we do player info name I believe not username because I don't don't want to put I, I stripped down a lot of the information for the dictionaries because it's going over the network and I don't want to bog down the network by sending too much unnecessary information um so it's just name all right so um I th that should update the the UI for the players um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that'll, that's going to crash here if I do this. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So now let's so we run it, see if it works. So in theory, I should get two players now instead of four. So player one. Oh, so it is requesting time. Why is it? It definitely requested time there. Oh, it's probably the, the, the time stuff's in the net code, isn't it? So it does sync time. It does it when you start it. Uh, sync time, host time offset. Uh, 
server that's server time minus the current time so to get the server time I just add the offset uh, all right now that that's that um, anyways run this again call this player one uh, let's load up our second client here we'll call this one player two um, and then hopefully they don't crash but they probably will they didn't crash the problem is I did not I'm dumb and I did not call the um, I uh, I still called that and it didn't replace it it seems to be self that attempt sync board um, and then hopefully it'll actually sync the board uh, we'll call this player one and then we need to load up our second client here. We play or two. Uh, and then we can do. It crashed. None type has no attribute from JSON. So what it's telling me is that the board is not instantiated yet. That, that makes sense. Um, so what I'm going to do. Wait, no. That doesn't make sense. Give me none. Hmm. Is there... I'm, I'm gonna have to start that up again. I'm, maybe I... I forgot. Maybe it wasn't the error I was thinking of. So we'll just wait, it'll crash. There we go, we got a crash. Um, so here's an error. Board state does not exist. So typically, if we go over to, where is it, game? Yeah, we're in game. Uh, is it not here? Wait, no, board state is, um, that's this one. Oh, you know why? I didn't register it as a child. Um, the board state, the board state is not a reference node, so I can't access it like that. What I have to do is I go to game dot board. That's how I have to do that. Um, all right, nothing in the net code changed, so I don't have to restart the co the server. Um, player two. Spawns. Where's that one coming from? So it needs spawns, it seems. Okay, um So that's going to be over here. I guess Why is it pulling spawns from? Oh I sh I need to stop closing these things. So it does spawns. We'll grab spawns in the boards and it tries to load the board. I thought I saw it in here. Oh, we have spawn count, but not spawns. So I gotta go over all the way over to our boards thing. We do spawn count equals lens spawns. So what 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 was I doing there? Why is the spawn count important? What is spawns? Spawns equals data swap, spawns equals this. 
Oh, these are the um the player spawns. Okay. I don't know what these are. I guess the idea was that I could calculate them from the spawn count. But in reality, it's just better if I just send the full list of spawns. Alright, restart the server. We try again. Player one, connect. Uh, player two. Unhashable type list. Let's see. All right. So we got what? Update piece map. Did, are the pieces like sent as a list or something? Wait. So if I go over to the board state again. So the pieces are loaded are loaded like that. But piece location map. So the piece that location is a list instead of a tuple. Oh that's that's I see what happened. Yeah, so Jason, this is a bit annoying. Jason does not have tuples. Tuples are not hashable, as in you can't use them as a key for, um... Sorry, tuples are hashable, which means you can use them as a key for dictionaries. Lists are not hashable, so you can't use them as a key for dictionaries. So because my tuples automatically get converted to lists when I convert them to JSON... Um... <laughs> my... it breaks stuff on the way back, so... The way I gotta fix this, uh, where is, um, pieces? Reese's pieces. Alright, from Jason. This is a single piece. Oh, is that how I call it? So I call board. Right. Yeah, it does it each individual piece. Okay. So this needs to be a tuple. Otherwise, that's not going to work. Um, I might fix that issue. We try again. Crashes again. Nothing. No, oh, it's a dictionary. Why is the player a dictionary? Oh, that's a UI thing. Yep. Um, that was uh completely just my bad. My bad. That's gonna be over in uh. Actually, no, it's over on players. Or no state. That's not right. So, that is not an object. That is, in fact, a dictionary. And then also, the thing I just remembered, that's um, the JSON version of players, which is right here, which gives team, not team ID. So it's just team. Well, in theory. So, we try again. Uh, let's start up this one. Part two. Uh, where is it here? Well, um, it loaded from the server, but we appear to have an issue. I see four players in here. There should not be, there should be two. It should be gray, gray, well, light gray and red. But why this thing's moving down? What happened? 
That's crazy. What? It's like it added to the, the turn order. So yeah. First, we have our kings here, which should not be there. And then, I have no idea what happened to the turn order there. Let me see if I can look at the, the data from before and figure out what happened here. So first of all, there's the, the pieces. So, I'm, I'm just going to grab this, throw it into notepad so I can search. Um, so we got this. Um, I want to see king. So there's one king, two king. There are two kings. Hello. There are two kings. Where did the other kings come from? <laughs> um, hmm. Hmm. Where could the other kings have come from? Uh, and then the turn order. Something's not getting updated right. So where's the turn order? Uh, turn order is one, two. So if I look at Look at the UI here. This is coming from the turn order. Um, it should be pulling from here. Uh, self that pieces. Self that turn order. I'll throw it right here and see. What's going on there? All right, all right. I'm, I'm gonna read chat real quick though. What is at property? Uh, property. Um, so normally objects have attributes like this, like rule sets, for example. You can do dot rule sets. Property is a decorator, which is um, a way you can modify its functions as you define them. That's the Simplest um, explanation I can give. It's also kind of oversimplifying, but uh, so it it takes a function and turns it into an attribute essentially. But in, look, whenever you try to access that attribute, it calls that function. So um, because attributes are not given arguments when you access them, uh, this needs to have no arguments other than self. So um, uh yeah so i can do like self dot max moves and that will call this function um so it's just kind of a way you can get some shorthand um all right you go all right bye although i guess i missed that <laughs> Uh, random question, but will my game be available for Linux? Which one? Technically, you can run the source on Linux for any of my games, because I always release the source code. Uh, for this project specifically, um, yeah, it should be, if I release it. Have I used Cython? Uh, no, I have not. Um, because it doesn't work well with Pygame. Uh, there's some weird stuff with the way that works with uh, Pygame that causes issues. Um, there's some some very few cases, actually, uh, where it help benefits you uh, with Pygame. They do exist, but um, I'm not dealing with those cases. So uh, I don't use it. <laughs> um, Blubber Quark wrote a thing about that, if you're curious. Anyways, uh, let's start this up again and see if I can figure out what happened here. Player one, and then we grab this and we say pl player two, we wait for them to connect. And then we close them and we open this up. So we have our pieces. Unfortunately, it does not tell me the pieces. Uh, Hmm. You know, I think I had some other initialization stuff that might be like 
in here that's causing problems. If that's probably my guess as to what happened here. So there's a point here. Oh, I think it's in state. This all needs to be removed. Um, so I don't need to do any of these steps now. I just need to do... That. Alright, we'll try that again. Player 1. We've got to start up player 2. Okay, that is what I expected. You see, there's two turns. Um, each one of these can move. Okay, they can, they can both only control gray, which is funny. Uh, it's a team ID thing. Um, anyways. Right now, it's not syncing the individual turns with the server. So they can move in different directions. Um, it just got the same beginning state. But, uh, because of the way this works, the, the timers are actually synced up. Um, a lot of the stuff is actually synced up, but I, I do need to move the players. Um, we get... This is almost done. Sort of, well, I should know. I wouldn't say it's almost done. Because I, I don't have that working in the context of the, the, the loop. What it needs to be is I have something that manages the game state overall, and then it cycles between like um, begin round, I guess player actions, and then end round. End round is when it plays through the results of the different moves. Um, so I need to set up something that manages that and manages that, and then I can put in this request. Uh, but I already wrote all the logic for that request, which is, I mean, that's what I spent stream doing pretty much. Um, that's what this does. So I can call this function again whenever I want to wait for that to happen. Oh, so this needs to return true here if it was able to sync. Otherwise, it returns false. That's important because uh, that will allow it to move on to the, the next step. Um, so I've done like half of the work here. I can resync the board pretty easily. Um, and, but there's still a lot of logical flow for how things work that needs to be done. Um, and it, I've already been streaming for two hours and I don't, I don't want to make this a four hour stream just to finish this. So I think I'm going to end this stream here. Um, normally I go two to three hours, so this isn't about a normal stream. Uh, anyways, my goal is to have that game jam style game done within the next week um i can't guarantee it'll be done by then but uh yeah um i have multiple videos in the works i have one about pi games future and game development i have a giant python i did not mean to hit that i have a giant python tutorial um and then uh what was I think that's the main stuff I'm working on right now. Technically, I have some other scripts laying around too, but um, yeah. So I have, I guess, I'm gonna do the time lapse first, and then you'll probably see a bunch of um, videos kind of back to back. Like I don't know, maybe we. My hope is I can get a video out this next week. The week after that, and then the week after that, just kind of back to back, pretty much. At least for me, back to back. I mean, a week is a pretty big gap for you guys, so, but uh, for me, uh, that's kind of back to back. Um, so, actually, hold on, I just remember. I'm gonna. Where was that print statement? Did I remove it? Oh, here it is. Ah, oh, no, I closed it. Gotta remove this before I forget. Yep, there it is. Remove that. Alright. But, um, yeah, so... Hopefully I'll have a bunch of videos out soon. 
Uh, I know I haven't uploaded anything in a long time, not since the shaders thing. Uh, so, um, yeah. Also, uh, ending the stream a bit earlier leaves me more time to work on that game jam style game. That's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Well, I actually have other stuff I have to work on. <laughs> I have a group project, and I have, um, uh, I have some stuff with one of my other internet projects that uh, i got to deal with this weekend. So I, I have a lot of stuff going on, but it still does give me more time to work on my Game Jam game. Anyways. Um, yeah. So expect a video next week, hopefully. I don't know. I give it 60% chance of happening. Um, but it'll be the time lapse. Um, and then, yeah. All right. I'm gonna end the go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you.